John 15, 25 is pretty straightforward. You have an unusual use of Allah as the first word, and you have an article that you need to find what it modifies. But other than that, it's straightforward. Al, hina, plerothe, halagas, ha, entonamo alton kegramenas, hati, emisesen me, doreyan. Verse 25 is picking up on verse 24 that says that if you hate Jesus, you also hate the Father. And then this is the follow-up, and you have this all, elided form of Allah, normally translated as but, but it really doesn't make sense in this sentence. And whatever, whatever you come across a word and the normal meaning for it that you've memorized doesn't fit, what do you do? You always go to the dictionary and you look for another use of that word. So when you go to Allah, and you have to scroll down quite a ways, but you get to number two, and the second meaning is when the whole clauses are compared, Allah can indicate a transition to something different or contrasted on the other side of the matter or issue. Uh, but yet are their glosses, but yet don't really fit. But you can see how this is how Allah is being used in verse 25. That is just indicating a transition. And the transition is, why do they hate him? Why do they hate his father? Well, because it's fulfillment of prophecy. So, but in order that the word might be fulfilled, so heirs passive of play rao. And then here's the tricky one. You hit an article, and you have article, noun, article. What follows almost always after that? Modifier, right? Second attributed position. But basically, when you see a construction like this, you have the article, and then you have a prepositional phrase. Know that the ha is going somewhere else, and where it's going to is the participle. So ha kegramenos is your substantival participle. And in the first attributed position, you have a prepositional phrase modifying it. So the, what has been written, where? In the law, in their law. And then we're going to come back to that in just a second. That they hated me Okay, just from the same verb we had in the previous verse, meseo. They hated me. Notice the accent. You have a double accent. That's because me has lost its accent back. So you say, emise san me. You would pronounce the me with the preceding verb. They have hated me without cause. So dorea is a adjective, but it's true, frankly, of all adjectives especially in the accusative, you can end up with it functioning adverbially. So let's get back to kegramenas. What on earth is that? Well, you have the basic root as being gra something. And when you have that double mu, you know that something has changed. And if you check the morphology at 21.1, it shows that anytime you have a labial, p, beta, or phi, followed by a mu, that labial changes to a mu. I mean, you can't say f -m, b -m, f -m, you know, smoothly. So what they do is they change the labial to a mu, and you get a double mu, which can be pronounced quite easily. So you have, it's grafo, right? And so you have the root graf, and when you add in the mu, then this particular combination can't be pronounced. And so it goes to graminas. But this is a perfect, so you have to have the reduplication up there in the front. So anyway, so perfect middle passive participle of grafo functioning substantively with the ha. Okay? So once again... But, in other words, I'm going to introduce some related idea. They hated me 
in order that the word which had been written in their law might be fulfilled, quote, that's what the Hatti's doing, right? Direct speech. They hated me without cause. So it's interesting to see how the different translations handle this. The NASB keeps the but and then adds in italics, this has happened so that, there's your henna. Uh, ESV starts a new sentence. The word that was written in the law must be fulfilled. So there's no real translation of the henna. NRSV, it was to fulfill the word that is written in the law. CSB, but this happened so that. NIV, but this is to fulfill what is written. Net, now this happened. And NLT, this fulfills what is written. So you can see they're all having to deal with the adversity of Allah. And it really doesn't, though, mean but. It's indicating this continuation uh, that now there's another side to this issue. And you get that in the NRSV especially. So in phrasing, we have to get the connector out by ourselves. Understood, this happened in order that the word, and then I'm going to pull out the modifier just to make things clear. So, but all this happened, you have to assume something right here, right? But all this happened in order that the word might be fulfilled. Well, what word? It's going to wrap there because of the screen size. What word? Well, the word uh, that has been written in their law, that was written in their law. And here's the actual word. They hated me without cause. I'm going to... This can get confusing here, I think, because it looks like you have three lines. So I'm actually going to reduce the size down. So I can get it on one pay on one line. There you go. But I guess that needs to be indented as well. But all this happened in order that the word might be fulfilled. Well, what word? The word which has been written in their law. What was that actual word? Statement, prophecy, or whatever you want to do with Lagos. Quote, they hated me without cause. And by the way, it's interesting. Uh, in the Nestle Alant, the 28th edition, they italicize Old Testament citations. In the UBS 5, they bold them. But they're just trying to indicate that Hati is introducing direct speech.